precious saints, viewers, welcome to the outpouring. Today on the outpouring, we are going to be speaking about the fruit of the spirit. And the slice that we are going to pay specific attention to would be that aspect of patience. And I'm not flying alone with this topic today. It's a heavy topic, so I have with me an uh, excellent teacher and an expounder of the word, none other than teacher Colleen. Teacher Colleen, welcome to the outpouring. Thank you, Sister Mother. <laughs> I just um, opened like that, but I wouldn't be calling you Teacher Colleen all along. So viewers, you know, on a more serious note, we, we as Christians, we are quite good with the spiritual talk and the spiritual part of things. Like, you know, we could talk prayer, we could talk praise, <coughs> worship, going to church. But the attributes or the values or the characteristics that we are to live by, I think there is where we are having a bit of a challenge because we're good at the Sunday morning church part of it. But as we relate to our fellow brothers and sisters, to our parents, to other people, the there's not enough evidence of the fruit of the Spirit at work in us. So today's program, we're going to begin by reading that beautiful area in Galatians. Colleen will read one part and I will read another part. Then I will speak a little bit and she will expound on the aspect of patience. So you might want to sit back, relax, Get your pen and pencils out because when we have a teacher in the house, you are going to be getting quite a lot of scriptural references to back up what we are doing. So we will begin with the reading. Karin, welcome. You want to start with the reading and then I'll continue. Thanks for having me, Sister Mava. Um, viewers, today we want to look at a very popular um, passage of scriptures in Galatians chapter 5. And we want to read from verse 16 to verse 26. Um, I would just read from verse 16 to 21, and Sister Marvel would read from verse 22 to 26. And keep in mind, we are reading the whole section primarily because we want to show the contrast between the works of the flesh and the fruit of the Spirit. So I start Galatians 5, verse 16. This I say then. Walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the lust of the flesh, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that he cannot do the things that he would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit... Let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. So just to repeat the nine slices, I call it slices of the same fruit. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, in other translations, it's patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Now, after this program, I want to challenge you to 
get uh, sit with yourself with a pen and paper and do a comparison with the area of walking in the flesh and walking in the spirit and be honest with yourself and mark yourself so that you know where you lack you know which are your areas of weakness so teach <laughs> You know, today we're looking at the fruit of the Spirit, and we don't want anyone to be confused. So when we talk about the Spirit, we're talking about the Holy Spirit Amen. of God. Because we know that there are many spirits, but we want to be clear. We're speaking about God's Holy Spirit, and that Holy Spirit is also known as the Comforter. Jesus said he goes so that the Comforter will come. And this Comforter, this precious Comforter, is here to lead us into all truth. He's here to teach us all things, and we need him. We need him because there are things that we don't know that he is able to teach us, especially of the Father and especially of Jesus. Now, the fruit of the Spirit is really the work of God in our lives. Amen. You know, that, that perfecting work that God wants to effect in our lives. And the fruit that Sister Marva would have indicated before, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. They are really evidence of God's work in us. You know, if you plant a tree, you expect fruit. And if it doesn't bear fruit, then it's barren, it's of no use. But God, being God, knows that he can't leave, you know, the work of transformation up to us. So what does he do? The word says that Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. So it is Christ who is working mm -hmm. out, you know, that transformation in us. And he expects that as we spend time in God's word, as we spend time in prayer, as we spend time allowing the word of God to change us, what is going to result is the nature of Christ and the nature of God. And for some of us, we may wonder, well, why do we need, you know, to manifest the nature of Christ or the nature of God. It is important that we understand in Genesis, God's desire was to make man in his image and in his likeness. But because of the fall, we no longer represent God. We no longer look like God. You know, it's like a father who, you know, he has some children, but the children don't look like him. They don't behave mm -hmm. like him. They don't have the mannerisms, you know, like what he has. So he has to put a plan in place so that he could see in these children his likeness and his image because it is as we become like him as we become more of a godly nature as we begin to represent more of Christ then God is able to commune with us if we don't have the nature of Christ if we don't have you know um, the spirit of Christ if we don't have the mind of Christ then God has nothing in common with us he cannot commune with us he cannot you know spend time with us because we are therefore going to be two different matters when we have christ in us also and we reflect the fruit of the spirit those who don't know the lord are able to be attracted to see christ. god because they cannot see god so who do they see they see us his children those who claim to be children of god and we represent love we represent peace, we represent long-suffering, we represent meekness and temperance, and those attributes cause people to believe in a God that they cannot see. It draws people, you know, to the knowledge of Christ, and it causes people to have some sort of hope. Because imagine you are going through this life, not having the knowledge of God, but you can encounter someone who has spent time with the Lord, someone who has been in the presence of the Lord and someone in whom the nature of Christ is seen. That encounter can change someone's life. That encounter can cause people to look beyond their circumstances and believe that there is a divine God, you know, that could work in their own situations. You know, I can give one little example. I remember there was a time some years ago I had to interface with a financial institution and I remember I had so much of a challenge just to get an appointment and when I did get the appointment it was one of those rough days and when I finally sat down with the officer from the institution she had such a beautiful spirit mm -hmm. 
that all my frustration and all my anger and all it my vexation, went. it just <laughs> dissipated. Mm -hmm. You know, and she, it, it's like everything that was happening with me just had no effect on her. She, she just had this beautiful spirit. And I remember that, that is more than 20 years ago, and I remember that incident. Because we have, once we yield ourselves to God working in us and producing his nature in us, that nature can bring a change in people's atmosphere. It, it can bring a change in people's environment. And that is what God is, is, is hoping for. So today, we know we could go in order, love, joy, peace, you know, but we want to take out patience. In the King James Version, um, the word used is long-suffering. And in the other versions, we would see the word patience. And we understand that long-suffering incorporates both patience and forbearance. You know, it is a strong word. It is not something that I think you can experience without the presence of God in your life. And there's one explanation um, for patience. It is the ability to accept or tolerate delays, problems, or suffering without becoming annoyed or anxious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to repeat that. It's the ability to accept or tolerate delays. So it's not just waiting, but you're tolerating delays, problems, or suffering without becoming annoyed or anxious. So in other words, you're facing obstacles while you're waiting for something to happen and you're facing those obstacles with joy. Not just being happy, but joy, you know? And this is important because without God, we cannot exercise patience. I mean, we exercise patience on a daily basis. You go to the bank to get something done. You might have to wait in line for two, three hours, depending on what bank you go to. And depending on what day you go, you may go to another institution to do something and there's a long wait. And some of us wait with grace and some of us wait, to put it nicely, without grace. <laughs> <laughs> but we know how that works. You, know, go you know, as you're saying that, what comes mm -hmm. to mind is um, what we may call a stoops. And anytime I hear anybody stoops, I would say to them, I say that's a sign of impatience. Yes, it is. <laughs> you know? Yes. So it's, it's, it's an area yes. that we can check ourselves. So while you're waiting, yeah. that line in the back. <laughs> and what we're doing is we're vexing our spirits. Mm -hmm. Why are we doing mm -hmm. that? You know, because sometimes I'm in the bank and I am calm and I'm reserved. Not that the weight is not affecting mm -hmm. me, but I've made a choice that I want to get the end result of standing in this line. And it is no different to the patience that we have to exercise in our walk with the Lord. What do we know from the onset? We know, first of all, that God is the source of patience. Romans 15, 5 says, Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one towards another, another according to Christ Jesus. He, Jehovah God, is the God of patience. We cannot exercise patience without knowing the God that we serve. Mm -hmm. It is not an attribute that is just something we happen upon. It is something that we access from spending time with the Lord. He's also a long-suffering God. Exodus 34, 4 says, And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. And every one of us could attest to the fact that God is long-suffering. He's long-suffering with us. Oh, with all our mess. <laughs> he's long. Some of us, he's waited 60 mm. years for mm. us to come to the Lord. Some of us, more than 60 years. You know, and he's patient because he knows what he has invested in us. He is not hoping in vain. This is not a God who is just waiting without any um, expectation of a turnaround. He is long-suffering with us. He's a long-suffering God. And if he is long-suffering, he expects us to exercise some level of long-suffering. And, you know, we need patience, eh? We need patience um, for our day-to-day -day activities. But there are certain areas we need patience. We need patience with one another. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in our relationships. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a marriage, whether it's a, 
a, another kind of family relationship, your parents, you know. Some of us have to exercise patience as our parents get older, you know. We have to operate in love with them. Whether it is a relationship at work, whether it is in the church, we have to exercise patience with the young believers, those who have just gotten saved and they, they are trudging through. So one you know, foot in, one foot mm -hmm. out. Those who leave and come mm -hmm. back, you know, we have to exercise patience with them. We need patience because patience is necessary to wait for things to happen. We can't rush things. We know we live in a world where everybody wants something now, but that is not how things happen. When a tree is bearing a fruit, it doesn't happen right away. The tree grows up, it gets strong, it gets sturdy, flowers come out, you know, we see the um, whatever insects are there for pollination, and then the fruit starts to form, but we just can't run out and pick it still. We still have to have patience waiting for that fruit to ripen, for it to be good enough for us to use. We need patience to trust God. Sometimes we're praying for something and God hasn't answered. And we just have to keep waiting before the Lord, keep seeking the Lord. Patience matures us. It fortifies us. It stabilizes us. It settles us like oil and water. <laughs> and you need mm -hmm. it. Because as we walk along the Christian walk, we need to be perfected. Patience must have its perfect work in us. And patience leads us to a life where we are more rooted in Christ. As we exercise patience, after a while you learn as a believer, when you are faced with situations, how to discern, you know, what should I stick with? What should I walk away from? Because you're learning the Lord. You're learning how God moves, you know. And there are some situations where God wants us to hold on to and to fight. Not a physical fight, but he wants us to hold on, believing that God is going to work it out. And just as you said about patience, settling us, we need to be rooted and grounded and settled in Christ. Mm. And patience affects that. There are some other scripture references um, that can be used. We cannot read them now, but people can look at them. Matthew chapter 18, verse 23 to 31. Luke chapter 8, verse 4 to 15. Luke chapter 21, verse 5 to 19. Romans chapter 5, verse 2 to 5. Romans 15, verses 2 to 6. And 2 Corinthians 6, verse 4 to 11. All of these references refer to the importance of patience as a believer. Now, as we mature in Christ, we realize that patience is a mark of the new nature we have in Christ. It is a fruit of our walk with the Lord. Titus 2.12 says, But speak now the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in clarity, and in patience. The aged men should be sound in patience. You should not be an aged person in the Lord and still you know, easily agitated, you know, you should be settled by now. And if I may say something there on the aged, um, I think it's the aged in the Lord and also as you get older. Mm -hmm. Because what I have found that patience is, is lacking in a lot of elderly people and in a lot of young people treating with elderly people. So if we allow ourselves from a you know, from all this and even my young age to grow in patience. Mm. When we get older and things are no longer as fast paced as we would like them or things are, have changed so drastically, mm. we as an older person would have been rooted in mm. patience. Mm. And then also for younger people dealing with the elderly mm. who would have slowed down considerably, they're forgetting a whole lot of things to really be able to just exercise that patience. Well, I always think that's a grace. <laughs> <laughs> well, patience and yes, grace. Yes, that, that is a grace because I don't think everyone has no. that ability. No. It really is a grace from God, you know. I, I notice also in the word, um, Hebrews 6, 11 to 12 says, And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence 
to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. It is a requirement that we have patience in order to inherit the promises of God. Um, the promises of God are such where we have to come after God. And coming after God requires some level of constancy and fervency. It also requires some level of ability to endure and to remain, you know, steadfast in the race. And we need patience to inherit what God has set aside for us. Um, there are two other references that speak to the same thing, and that is Hebrews 10, verse 34 to 39, and Hebrews 6, verse 15. Those two scriptures speak to exercising patience as we try to obtain the promises of God. Many of us, you know, the promises of God elude us. We start mm -hmm. off the Hot journey, and <laughs> but with the zeal, as you say that mm -hmm. hot and sweaty, with the mm -hmm. zeal and the vigor and the passion, but the patience, you know, eludes us. For the distance, to go that distance. We also need patience to live as a believer. Hebrews 12, verse 1 to 3 said, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. It's a common scripture, but interestingly, it is one that sometimes we read it so often we overlook it. We are being asked to run with patience. We are being asked to understand that some obstacles are going to come in this race. This is not a... 100 meter Dash. sprint. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is mm -hmm. actually, a you know, what, what they call <laughs> hurdles. Or, hurdles. <laughs> yes, it's an obstacle race. Mm -hmm. And that is life. And we require some level of patience, understanding that, listen, we have to finish. The obstacles are going to come and we have to hold on. And I just want to say quickly, um, when you don't have patience, there are certain things that tend to show up in us. Anxiety. We are hasty, we are agitated, we easily give up or we walk away from purpose. And we could also reflect impatience. Now when we are impatient, we cannot wait on God. We tend to run ahead of God. We tend not to allow things to go its natural course. And we could even abort the goals and the plans and purposes God has for us. In fact, when I look at the word impatience, impatience tells us about restlessness about irritability, not wanting to put up with circumstances or wait for something or someone. So we're restless or we have a tendency to be quickly irritated or provoked or we're intolerant. Mm -hmm. And many of us could identify with that restlessness mm -hmm. and that being easily agitated. Sometimes God wants to do a major work in our lives, but our impatience is causing us to abort what God wants to do. And the quicker we settle down, the quicker we reala realize that without um, the patience that God wants us to have, we are not going to mature. We're not going to grow. We're not going to move the way we ought to move. Mm -hmm. And sometimes as, as believers, we, we don't even realize we have that problem. It's very easy to see in another person, you know, simple things of impatience. But we in ourselves, self-examination, we need to realize that many of us, our lives aren't producing the fruit that it ought to produce because of impatience. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in all things through prayer and supplication, make your requests known unto God. Mm -hmm. Anxiety cannot, cannot produce the fruit that we need. Well, we have just about three minutes left, mm -hmm. and uh, I, there's something... <laughs> In growing up, I'd hear people say, one thing you should never pray and ask the Lord for is patience. Because you, you will get <laughs> trials. <laughs> you know, but that's okay because, you know, these trials, they come to make us strong. So as we wrap up today's program on, you know, the fruit of the Spirit with this special emphasis on patience, it's such a beautiful Heart, uh, that is really lacking in our fast-paced society so I want to challenge you to pray for patience and we are going to close this program by praying for you in that area and view the trials as opportunity 
for growth, not, oh gosh, trouble coming my way, but it's opportunity for growth. So Father, I give you thanks, God, for Jesus. today. Lord, I thank you for this program. I thank you for your word. Father, I thank you for all those who are looking at this program today. And Father, I pray, God, that you would help them, Father. God, that patience will become a beautiful virtue in their lives. Yes, Father, I pray that the fruit of the Spirit will be made manifest. God, not only in those who are viewing, but even in us, Father, that we will really reflect the beauty of Christ, that the Spirit will be evident in us. Father, I pray for those who are sitting, viewing right now, God, that you would strengthen them. God, cause this word to come alive in them. Oh, Father, Kitty, you, you continue the prayer. We have a minute Father, left. we just give you praise. We just give you thanks. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to come into the homes, to come into the lives, to connect with those who are struggling in this area. Father, we pray, God, for the perfect work of Christ, oh God, to be formed, to, to be manifested in the lives of those who are viewing. Oh God, Father, move your people from a place, oh God, of impatience to a place of patience. Move your people, oh God, from a place of struggle to a place, oh God, where they can rest in you, they can put their faith in you, they can trust in you. Oh God, Father, we pray even as this program, oh God, is viewed, oh God, every time it is viewed, someone, oh God, is going to overcome in that area, oh God, where they lack patience. Someone is going to yield themselves to the Holy Spirit. Spirit and the Holy Spirit is going to have its perfect work, oh God, in their lives. God, we thank you, God, because we ask in faith. We thank you, God, because you said we have not, because we ask not. So we ask, God, believing the power of your word, believing in the power of the Holy Spirit, and trusting in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Teacher Colleen, Henry Burrell, thank you so much Welcome. for sharing. Viewers, this has been the outpouring for your refreshing shalom.